Let the attack of the awesome begin. And welcome to this week's edition of Attack of the Awesome, a podcast so awesome we'd die harder than John McClane. Joining me on our milestone 10th episode are my fellow co-hosts, Scooter Mike. Say hi. Hey. And JJ Laforte. What? Say hi. No. That's your line. I'm eating. I sent you the goddamn script. Read your goddamn line. Fine. Hello. And I am your host, Susie, a.k.a. the Blockbuster Chick. So how are we guys doing on our Milestone 10th episode? Well, I wasn't really here for like the first seven episodes, but hey, I feel like we achieved something. Ain't that right, Mike? Oh, yeah. JJ, you've not been with us long, but we think you've been a fabulous addition to our squad. So once again, we welcome you to the team, and we are awesome. What about Chris? Well, Chris sadly couldn't make it today due to work commitments. Chris, we are sorry that you couldn't make it onto the episode today, and we miss you, man. So let's get this party started then. And our first segment, as ever, is Around the World, where we talk about the yeah. YouTube and internet videos that we saw this week. So, JJ, since you went first last time, I'm going to go with Mike. All right. YouTube. Everybody get their onions ready. Yay. Yes. <laughs> on YouTube, I usually look for music videos to watch on YouTube, and I saw a few. I'd just say one of them is from a band known as the Austrian Death Machine. Some of you out there may remember uh, Spoonie talking about this band. They parody and pay tribute to Arnold Schwarzenegger's films, songs like Get to the Chapa and uh, I Need Put Your Put the clothes. cookie down. <laughs> And their other one known as I Need Your Clothes, Your Boots, and Your Motorcycle. And they have music videos to these songs, and it's pretty awesome what they do for each song. Besides the Austrian Death Machine, I discovered that there's a new Bond song out there. There's a new James Bond song that's on YouTube. Apparently, this Bond song is called Devil May Care. It's Uh by an unknown group called Saul. And it's for a Bond novel called Devil May Care. And apparently the story behind it is that the author who wrote the novel had a contest for a new Bond song to go with the audiobook of it. And if you buy the audiobook of Devil May Care, you can listen to the song before the actual novel. And it's pretty cool. That's new. I've, n- I've never heard of a band doing a song about a Bond novel. That's novelty. Is it really good? The song's pretty good. I'll just say it's good. I'm planning on reviewing it in the future. And actually, let me briefly talk talk about there's actually a new bond novel coming up soon it's called carte blanche and it's coming out was it may 26 in the uk we get and first we get yes, first yes and it's coming in the u.s on june 14th it's apparently this novel is going to be set 2011 he's going to be in the mid 30s and i'm excited for this new novel devil may care on the other hand i have the novel as well it's actually set in the 60s compared to the new one that's set now wait did you say the character's going to be in his 30s yeah the new one because the author figured that James Bond would be born in the 80s and new Bond novel would have him in the 30s. Whoa, that's just blowing every other Bond movie out the out the bloody water there. They've been exactly. in their 40s and their 50s. What, Pierce Brosnan was in his 40s and the 90s when he did Goldeneye and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. That's a little yeah. bit stupid. That's what I saw on YouTube. What it's did okay. you guys see around the web? JJ, do you want to take this? Yes, yes I do. If you guys haven't heard of this guy named Brent Rental floss. Basically, he goes back through and he takes old video game theme tunes like the Super Mario theme, the Final Fantasy theme, and he will make lyrics to it while like doing like a music video to it. It's kind of it's kind of cool actually. Like awesome. he made like a music video to Doctor Mario, and it's just like the best song I've ever heard. And like recently, I watched one of his videos. It's called "The Truth About Toad," and <laughs> it's about him being gay. <laughs> 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 he says that he's bi, but we all know that's not true. <laughs> well, if you explain why he kept uh, popping up instead of the princess, I think he just got to each castle, and saw that she was there, and just kicked her as like, I'm getting the man, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the princess isn't in this castle, but I'm here. Oh, God, that actually kind of sounds kind of weird. <laughs> 
And then they right. just, he just leaves right. anyway. Yeah, I've just been watching, like, different, like, people, like, play, like, the Zelda theme on the piano or Sonic themes on the piano. That would be really cool to see a classical music versions of video game themes. Mike, do you play any instruments? I never asked you this. No, I don't. You're a music man, and you don't play any freaking music. <laughs> yeah, I don't at all. I actually want to play the drums. <laughs> like me being a gamer, and I don't play any games. <laughs> <laughs> I play instruments. Uh, I play the set and the piano. I do the flute, the piano, I taught myself the saxophone and then teach myself the clarinet. Matter of fact, Susie, why aren't you the music person? <laughs> You're the one who can sing and got all the musical talent. Because I rant more about movies. Damn it, Mike. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Susie, what did you see around the web? Well, I love watching bloopers of I movies, know. TV shows. Oh, I love watching them. They give me the fits of hysterics. I absolutely love them. And ages ago, I'd come across a website. It's now, I featured this website before so it's not this one I'm talking about Basically, they did bloopers of old video games like Super Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog, etc. So I was having a look for different blooper videos of video games, and I came across one a couple of days ago. This guy's name's Ryan Speaks 2007. He, he lives in the UK, actually. And I was having a look at a few of his videos, and the one that got me in fits of hysterics, and I, th- I thought of you, JJ, for this because I've been talking about Super Mario Brothers recently. He's done quite a few blooper videos of Sonic the Hedgehog, and this one was absolutely hysterical. Like, the beginning of it, he has Mario appearing in the beginning to say, It's me, you Mario! And Sonic comes on, grinds over him and kills him, and he's like, Oh! Um, and Sonic is diving off the edge of a cliff going, Ah! And crashing down at the bottom. And Dr. Eggman comes in, and Sonic tries to go and fight him, and he jumps on his head, and his blood gushing out. Everyone's like, Oh! You have to see it for yourself. It is, it is really funny. And uh, another couple videos that I saw by this guy, I had to see more. This one was really funny. It's called Super Mario Killer Jump. And it's basically Mario coming on and trying to get one of the coin boxes in the level. But he's the tiny version of himself. The version where you get a mushroom and you get bigger. He's trying to get this box to get a mushroom out, but he can't quite reach it. So he goes and gets a turtle to go and fling it up, and he kind of get it, and he's standing there, his face is getting redder and redder and redder. And then he goes to get a trampoline and it brings it on and then he jumps on it and jumps up to the box and smashes his head in and then decapitates himself and he rolls down <laughs> and the mushroom I, comes I've seen out that before. I've seen that I, it's so funny it's it's only like a minute long or something um, but it's it's hysterical if you haven't seen this guy yet anybody that's listening Ryan Speaks 2007 he does wicked Sonic the Hedgehog bloopers and Super Mario bl- bloopers also look at the Super Mario Benny Hill one that is brilliant. So, that's what we saw around the web. So we move swiftly on to what in the world of... And since you guys have already gone first in the last ones, I'm going to start. So, what in the world of movies? Now, I've got a couple of articles and um, some film releases uh, to talk about. So, the first what in the world of movies. This does have a little bit to do with movies, but it was an interesting article that I, I found out this week. YouTube is launching video rent. Rentals. Basically, they're launching a new movie rental service so people can watch movies on YouTube for some fecking reason and get charged for it. The price of movies between $99.99. Like yeah, it's like 99 cents to $4 to, to rent movies on YouTube. It's going to be adding more than three. You can just three... buy that on eBay. I know. That's okay, worth I... interruption. Like, seriously, like, why, why would I buy movies on YouTube? Like, I, I'm required to have internet when I could just get it on eBay or Amazon or something like that and get it for like three ninety nine. I'm sorry. Exactly. Yeah. And then you can just upload it onto your computer and then sit and watch it as many times as you want. With YouTube, it could take God knows how long to download. I just think it's absolutely ludicrous. They're adding more than 3,000 movies for its users. It's starting tomorrow, actually, on my birthday. Along with, the, of course, the rest of the, the videos that they have on YouTube. And they basically said that they're, they're doing this to kind of redevelop the site and tweak its image away from it being a site for grainy two-minute clips of users, pets, and kids. And I'm thinking, if you don't want that many clips on there, why do you delete some and tell people that they can only upload so many clips that would stop that problem instead of trying to turn it into an, an online blockbuster and just changing the image of it all together to something really ridiculous it's stupid some of the movies they're gonna make available to watch are ghostbusters the expendables 
Skitty Movie 4 and Super Size Me. Mm, uh-huh. I had that movie, but like it was already free, though, on YouTube. Yeah, it was, Super Size Me was free on YouTube at one point. I actually watched it on YouTube. I did, too. There were some people, when the time limit of YouTube got deleted, got taken away for some users, there were some movies that popped up, because I saw Cars appearing on there one day, and Beauty and the Beast. I just, I, so, yeah, is that actually, really going against the copyright thing? They're going to just upload movies onto there? Well, actually, it's, there's one movie that was uploaded by a user, and it was uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. The whole movie's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. This article just caught my eye for being utterly ridiculous. I thought, the same lines as you, JJ. I thought, why the hell would you want to pay three ninety nine to download or watch a movie? It's not even to download it. It's to rent it on YouTube when you can just go buy it off of eBay for under a dollar and upload it onto your computer. Now, the next article that I have is titled, Will Smith Upsets New York Locals. Now, again, this Yay. isn't directly... I know, I love Will Smith. This isn't directly linked to any movies or upcoming stories or anything. This is about Will Smith upsetting some residents in a New York neighborhood. Basically because he's filming Men in Black 3 in New York, he has parked his huge Winnebago in the middle of um, a busy New York street. Yeah. And pissing loads of people off. That thing is huge. Have you seen a picture of that thing? It basically is a waste of time because he has that thing parked out and it says he's wanting to bring his home comforts with him onto his filming location each day. But he's renting an apartment less than a mile away from where this thing is parked. He's renting the apartment for £15,000 a month. I don't know what he's trying to do if it's part of a ploy for the for the movie for advertising or something, but it's just unbelievable. So um, I am not surprised that... <laughs> That the residents are, are as pissed as they are. I'll give you some features of what the trailer actually has inside, because it doesn't just have basics in it. <laughs> oh, no. It actually consists of two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a cinema, offices for his assistants, a bar, marble floors, and it roughly measures about 1,150 square feet. I know he's Will Smith and he's awesome and all, but... You don't need an apartment if you have that big of a trailer with two bedrooms in it. Yeah, to me that's very prickish of him, so... (laughs) Will Smith, don't do that again. Don't do that. He's pulling a Wild 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 West stunt with that. Just don't be an idiot. Anyway, (laughs) so... Actually, can I bring up something a little bit about Will Will Smith? Quentin Tarantino's making, like, a spaghetti western, and he's thinking about casting Will Smith. No! Yeah, so he's going to be in another Western type of film. To be fair, he was the only awesome thing in Wild Wild West, so he saved that movie yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, so let's get on to the movie releases. There's a couple out for the past Friday the 13th. Woo, spooky. Uh, <laughs> the first one that's had some reviews of it on That Guy With The Glasses is Priest, starring Paul Bettany. I'll just read the tagline. Hmm. A legendary warrior priest from the last vampire war now lives in obscurity among the other downtrodden human inhabitants in Walden dystopian cities ruled by the church. Captivating so far. When his niece is abducted by a murderous pack of vampires, priest breaks his secret vows to venture out on an obsessive quest to find her. So it's one of those heroes who has a dark past and goes out to seek vengeance of his daughter slash niece slash grandmother slash chicken. Blah, blah, blah. This isn't one I fancy seeing. It looks very dark, looks very yeah. depressing, and it's not my cup of tea. But for anybody interested, priest starring Paul Bettany, was released on Friday. And the next one that also came out on May 13th is a new Will Ferrell movie. This is called Everything Must Go. And basically, when alcoholic Nick Housley, played by Will Ferrell, relapses, causing him to lose his wife and his job, he holds a yard sale on his front lawn in an attempt to start over. He is at the lowest point in his life. However, a new neighbour might be the key to his return to form. Now, for some reason, I can picture Ned Flanders being in that movie, or a Ned Flanders-type character. I don't know why, but that's... That's just what I imagine when I'm reading that. So that sounds really intriguing to me, and Will Ferrell is just brilliant in anything he does. Yes, well, I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. The last one I'm going to talk about is not one I'm really looking forward to seeing, but it's one I will watch just to see what they're doing wrong with it, and that's the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. It comes out for you guys on May 20th, that's this coming Friday, and it comes out in the UK on Wednesday the 18th. What can you say? Yes. <laughs> what? 
you really see about Pirates of the Caribbean. Other than that, it is just getting dragged through the mud so bloody much it's just gotten beyond a joke. It's just the Jack Sparrow movie. Basically, the story that they've got for this is Jack Sparrow unexpectedly finds himself on an adventure with the fierce pirate Blackbeard and a woman from his past. What's different about that than from the last movies? But he's going to the Fountain of Youth this time. Woo. And there's some surprising casting in this. Number one, this is directed by Rob Marshall. If nobody knows who Rob Marshall is, he directed the movie adaptation of Chicago, the musical. And oh. also Musical 9. Now, those two movies I, I freaking love. Because I'm a musical theatre now, I absolutely love them. I love his cinematography. I love his direction. He is awesome. So that's a little bit of what intrigues me about this movie. Also, the fact that Penelope Cruz is in it. I think she's okay. I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, but it'll be interesting to see where they take that character. And Ian McShane. Not a lot of people might know who this guy is. He's very big in the UK in the 80s for a show he did called Love Joy. He's been in a few other movies. He is a really good actor, but it's just surreal seeing him in this movie so it will be interesting to see where they take this movie with the director that they've got and the cast that they've got but I just think it's past its fucking time so as I said Pirates of the Caribbean comes out in the US on May 20th this coming Friday and in the UK on the 18th this coming Wednesday so who wants to go next? What in the world of music? Now for this segment of mine it's got a theme and it's a theme of collaborations. So the first collaboration in music that came out recently was Snoop Dogg with Charlie Sheen for a new song called Winning. <laughs> <laughs> I was yep. wondering when that would happen. I listened to it. It's not bad. It's just Snoop Dogg rapping and you don't even hear Charlie Sheen. But you yeah! You hear him <laughs> say, winning, winning, winning. Oh my god! It's, I strongly suggest you to listen to this song. It's winning, 100%. <laughs> the website I got this from is my current favorite website called Pop Crush. They reviewed it, and they said it was 7 out of 10. I would give it an 8 out of 10. The other collaboration that came out recently was the trio of The Lonely Island, which they came out with the I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat! Oh wait, no, you can't... Forget. I just had sex. Yep, that was too. Yes. And it felt so good. So they came out with a they came out with a new song called Jack Sparrow. Oh no! And here's the funny thing: it features Michael Bolton with them. What? Yes. This is fucking hilarious because this music video is amazing because the Lonely Island Boys are rapping about in a club, but Michael Bolton sings about Jack Sparrow in the Pirate of the Caribbean movies, and they're like, no, no, stay on track. And then he keeps on going, but he says, oh, let me try some other films. So he starts singing about Forrest Gump, Air Brock, and Bridge, <laughs> Starface. <laughs> That actually sounds epic. And, alright, this is a news article come, talking about what's coming up in collaborations. Can you think of two people who would possibly collab together, like an actor and an artist, like Charlie Sheen and Snoop Dogg? Nicole Kidman, because I know she can sing a little bit. Um, I am Christina Aguilera. Nah, actually, it's Johnny Depp and Steven Tyler working together with a song. Oh! Thank oh you. Johnny Depp actually wants to collaborate with Steven Tyler, and it's been confirmed, and they're working on it with a song. Oh my god, I would, have, I would totally listen to that. I love those two. I love them. I love <laughs> yeah, Johnny Depp. A... He's yummy. And Steven <laughs> Tyler is, is cool. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> and actually, Steven Tyler wants Johnny Depp to play an adaptation of the story behind it. Aaron Earl Smith as well, but yeah, it's interesting oh. to see what they, they would come up with. I'm excited! I'm excited about that now! <laughs> Thank you, Mike! You're welcome! That's why I figured <laughs> I'd bring it up! And that's What in the World of Music Collaboration Edition. Well, that was very interesting! I am excited now about that! <laughs> JJ, can you top it? Well, I could top this. I just got motherfucking awesome blog of the week. Woo! What? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it got awesome blog of the week. I didn't notice that neither until like just somebody like on um Skype just like wrote that to me real quick. But anyway, back to video games. My summer is currently being ruined right now because PSN network is, is still down. You guys don't know what it's like to like like to uh, many kids right now. They're like spring break, summer break is probably being ruined too because 
there's kids out there that probably play online and do different things online every day. Like, I never really play any video games online. I just kind of, like, download, like, old PlayStation games off a PSN network and whatnot. But we don't – it's gone. And, like, it's because of this one hacker. This has been, like, almost a month now now that we didn't have PSN. It's just, like, seriously, it's really starting to get to me now. Because there's some demos I want to download. Also, I noticed that, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, it's because of, like, oh, Nintendo sucks because it has, like, terrible graphics and whatnot. They're actually talking about, like, releasing – a new type of Wii. Like, they said it's an updated Wii, but not necessarily like a new game system, but it might as well be called a new game console. But yeah, Nintendo is going to release a new game console, actually. They're going to, like, unveil it at E3, probably. But they're like, they got that in the talks right now, and it's going to be able to do HD. It's going to be able to compete, well, not compete, but do graphics better than on um, PS3 and the Xbox 360. But they're talking about, like, that's really not necessary. And, like, they're thinking that that's probably going to make Nintendo lose money. But I'm not really sure, because, like, what Nintendo did was that they made games fun. They didn't really care about special graphics and whatnot. And that's why they're dominating the competition and having people copying them right now. Uh-huh. Yep. I mean, have you guys yes. ever used the Kinect before? No, uh, um, oh. but I've been intrigued by it. What about the PSP Move or the Wii, the Wii controls oh, for the PS3? The, I'm a Wii girl. I only used the PS3 control once, and like I really just said, like they they, they completely copied the Wii. Like this, yeah, this 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 should get like sued or something. Something should happen. That's not fair. I mean, at least the Connect, it's like a, whatever you call it. It's kind of like the iToy, but just like a better version of it. But I mean, PS3, come on now. You guys are straight up plagiarism. Just, uh. They're unleashing another Assassin's Creed game, and it's called Re- Revelation. I don't know if this is Assassin's Creed 1, 2, or 3. I'm not sure. But yeah, they're, like, if you guys ever played Assassin's Creed, it's coming out in November. Do you guys know what Dogma is? I know of the movie Dogma, but I've never heard of the game the Dogma. Yeah, well, but what's the movie about real quick? I just want to know, because there's this game right now with the title Dogma. It's called Dragon's Dogma. If I remember rightly, it's a film from the 90s with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. But I don't really know a lot about it. My brother does. But it's about the devil and worshipping and not something I really watch. But that's why I say I know of it. I've never seen it. Is it about death or anything? I think so. Well, yeah, they got this game coming out called Dragon's Dogma, and it's, like, about going around roaming the land. It's an open RPG, and you just kill dragons, pretty much. They should call it Dragons of Euthanasia or something. (laughs) Yeah, something like that, yeah. Good. That sounds like a sort of Sam and Max game. I hate reading articles that say something's coming out in 2012. Are we even going to be alive still then? Yes, we are, because Marty B. Fly traveled to 2015 and back to Future Part 2. (laughs) <laughs> oh, well, that clarifies that point. Right. If Marty, Mc, if Marty McFly went to the future in, in a movie, of course we're going to survive past it. As long as Roland Emmerich's <sighs> not involved. Well, yeah. lastly, like, I want to finish off, like, my favorite game series. Sonic Generations. Yes. Oh, boy. That's been announced, and it's coming out around the holiday season. And it's just going to star the modern-day Sonic and the uh, new Sonic. I probably mentioned this before, but I'm going to keep saying it in every freaking podcast until I play the fucking game. <laughs> this game looks sweeter Yay. and sweeter and every time I look at it. Right, so that is our What in the World of. So let's go over to Scooter Mike with the Weird News segment. This first one, which was posted on the 10th of May, the title of the article is Woman Allegedly Hid 47 Balloons of Heroin in Her Vagina. Oh, God, I saw that! Now, police in Ohio say they arrested a woman who hid in town as concealing balloons of heroin in a body cavity. Sheriff deputy in Delaware County in Ohio nabbed a 20-year-old accused of smuggling about 2.23 grams of dope in her vagina. Is there any reason why? There is no reason. They just found her and she's like, oh, I'll take this heroin away from ya. And so act- she basically was tidying up and that was the only place that she could think? Actually, the 47 balloons of heroin is summed up worth of 850 bucks. Alright, these next two articles is based in Michigan, where JJ's from. Yay! Yay. First article from Michigan says... <clears throat> Batman arrested on Michigan rooftop. 
Is he going to, like, commit suicide or something? Police, <laughs> police in a resort community in northwest Michigan are toting the uh, arrest of the legendary Cape Crusader Batman, who was reportedly nabbed while dangling from a 30-foot tall building. You sure it wasn't Robin? Because it would be more explainable if it was him. Was Mini Batman with him? No. <laughs> oh, Robin? No, his name is Mini Batman. I wish I was there to see that, actually. I would have taken a stereo and had the Batman theme playing out in the movie Phil. And no, 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 The next one from Detroit. Detroit cop allegedly caught having sex with a cross-dressing prostitute in his patrol car. That doesn't sound weird. Does to me because I'm like, okay, does he know? There's actually a show on in the UK where they actually did a storyline like that. There was a guy that was getting together with a transvestite and he didn't know, and it went on for like a week and it was hysterical. That's what I'm thinking. It doesn't sound weird to me. For me, I was yeah. like, how does he not know if it was a transvestite hooker? So he's suspended from the force. No. Yeah, he sucks. sucks to be him. Oh, well. And that's the weird news. Not as weird as the breast milk. We were expecting weird... <laughs> you gotta go weirder than breast milk cheese. You gotta go weirder than that damn exploding dildo, man. I, I, that's still hitting me very hard. <laughs> oh, God. Next week, I'll find something more weirder. Yay. So let's move Ooh. on to the most <laughs> awesome of the week. Who would like to go first on this? Me, because I am the most awesome of the week. GG, what is the most awesome game of the week? Dark Spore. Have you guys ever heard of Spore? <laughs> I have. Yeah, it's a monster stem that just involves you creating monsters, and you get to make monsters, like, and have them battle and whatnot. It's like Pokemon, just you get to create your own Pokemon. But in Dark Spore, it's taking on more of an action RPG element, and it's more into space instead of, like, the lush forest and whatnot. You can travel planets, and it's pretty much not an MMO, but, like, something that you can play on your computer and send different monsters to friends and whatnot. I need to play this game. Game, but it's only for PC, so I might, like, pick it up maybe, I don't know, when I get, like, a shitload of money for, like, being awesome or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's my freaking... They got a silver in Game Informer, by the way. Silver, which oh, is good, because silver is sparkly. Uh, what's the awesome movie of the week? The awesome movie of the week is The King's Speech. This was finally released on DVD on the 9th of May in the UK. I didn't get a chance to actually declare this an awesome movie of the week, because by the time we were recording episodes, it was the following week, so I couldn't get to do it. So finally, I can now fucking say The King's Speech is the most awesome movie of the week. For good reason. Number one, it won Best Movie. Number yeah. two, Colin Firth is in it. Number three, the story is incredible. It's one of those few movies that I've seen where you can actually really sympathize with the lead character. Even though you know what this is a real story, the way that they portray the story is incredible. I know people have questioned why Tom Hooper won the Best Director Oscar for this movie, but if you've never seen it, then you can't dismiss it. You can't say this is an okay movie. For me, it is... It's up there on my list with The Truman Show is perfection. I absolutely love this movie. I love the, the humour that they managed to get into this somewhat serious story and the way that the story flows through King George VI rise into becoming king of England. It's, it's moving. It is funny as hell in some parts, especially when he's actually getting the speech therapy done through the film. It's just it's hysterical. You think that you shouldn't be sitting there laughing out loud at this, but it is really funny at points. There are the poignant moments that it comes to which for me get a lump in my throat of course but the humorous bits are really really funny so I absolutely adore this film I can sit and watch it again and again and again now so for anybody who's not seen The King's Speech please go out and buy it it is incredible right so Mike what's the most awesome song of the week awesome song of the week is actually from the new post-death album of Michael Jackson Michael of course and Yay. it's and let's feature a song known as Hollywood Tonight from the album. It's about a girl who goes to Hollywood to achieve her dreams of becoming famous in Hollywood. And Sounds like Flash Dance. Yes. <laughs> let, me, let me bring that up because they, re they released the music video of it, and the video actually depicts it as Flash Dance because... She's a dancer, and she's trying to get in as a big dancer, and there's a couple of scenes where it's like Flash Jam. Does she sit in a chair and spray water over herself? 
Oh, but there's a couple of scenes where she's actually trying to get money to become a famous dancer in a strip club, so... Is she a welder? No. What does she do? I don't know. They don't even depict it in the <laughs> video. She just comes off a bus in Hollywood. She just tries to get in as a dancer, and she actually dances like uh, Michael Jackson, more likely, too. I hate that when they, they build up big storylines and music videos, but they don't give you a background of the character real quick. Yes, it's just it exactly. comes off a bus and then dance, woman, dance. Yeah, you got you to gotta build up some character development in music videos sometimes because if you're setting up a character who is a main star of the video, you got to set something up. But yeah, most of the song of the week is Hollywood Tonight <laughs> by Michael Jackson. Yay. Well, yay. There we go. Actually, I think it's time for the Attack Squad Q&A, and we do have some questions. Yay! Yay. All right, for the entire crew here, if you could be any DC slash Marvel superhero for a day, who would it be and why? JJ, what's your answer? Can I be a villain? Sure, I guess. It's even I want to be Dr. Doom. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're bending the rules, but that's okay. And why? Because he wears a helmet and he wears a mask and he's freaking awesome and he has magic powers. <laughs> okay. Matter of fact, matter so of fact, I'd be Shuma Guma. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, if you could be any DC or Marvel superhero, who would it be and why for a day? Well, I would. I was originally going to go with Spider Man and just say, because it's freaking Spider Man. Because I'm not going to go with the stereotypical, oh god, I've got to be a girl superhero. No. I would love to be Wolverine. Just so I could give a few people back from my past a good clawing. Anybody that pissed me off in my past will get a clawing. I'll just go around to their house, ding dong, hello. <laughs> Oops, you're dead. Oops, I've been thinking about this, and there's a superhero character uh, known as Moon Knight. He's actually a bit like me, because he's got like a split personality. A psycho, but he's a superhero. And you think you're a superhero. Okay. Yeah, but, <laughs> alright, alright, the next question. Hello, Mental Hospital? Yeah, I've got one person comment. Doom. By the way, those asked by Movie Fan 12, his next question for all of us is, are clowns evil? Yes. <laughs> they're the, they're the enemies, they are the sacred enemies of nudists, actually. Really? <laughs> okay, where am I here? Where's... Okay, go back on that, go rewind, what? That's very intriguing, why are they mortal enemies of n- nudists? Because they don't wear clothes and I despise them. Even though I don't get it, because won't they be cold or something? <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So the next question for all, all of us. What's your worst nightmare that Freddy Krueger would like to kill you? Yay. JJ. If he cuts off my penis. <laughs> <laughs> that, nah, I wouldn't want to live after that, so you might as well kill me then and there. If he cuts off my penis, just I'll be all like, man, just, just kill the fuck out of me. I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I need this thing. I don't think I can stop that. <laughs> no. I don't, we need our penises. Yes. Yeah, so we can't pr- have children. Oh, exactly. Well, Hello, I'm a girl. I know. He's talking to uh, me. He can shove a brick up your vagina, and you'll never <laughs> be able to use that ever again. <laughs> It'll be called a brick vagina. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll go. Mine would probably be to lock me in a room and make me watch 2012 over and over and over again. Okay. It's not pretty interesting, but (laughs) that would kill me. If you just put it on certain clips and put it on repeat and glued headphones to my ears and made me listen to it over and over. You mean like uh, in uh, Clockwork Orange, like that? Yeah, like that. Just with 2012 over and over and over again. And Chris Tucker from The Fifth Element. (laughs) Yeah. Just doing that constant bzzz sound. Yeah, that would freaking annoy me. Oh god, uh, oh god, come on, oh god, oh god, come on, oh god. Oh, I hate that guy. I freaking 
Uh, for him to kill me, he would have to play Little Kim's In the Air Tonight cover over and over, because that cover is, ah, uh, Little Kim just fucking ruined In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. And if he played that over and over and made me listen to it, I would be dead. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I see a flaw in your plan. He would just come along with a stereo, hit play, and then you just stand there. You wouldn't try to run away or something. You wouldn't go and press the stop button on the stereo. <laughs> okay, let me clarify. He would actually strap me in a chair and handcuff me to the chair, which is bolted to the floor, so I wouldn't be able to move. Okay, that's better. The next question, which is a little more generic, but it's good to know. How do we discover Channel Awesome? So who Mike, how did you discover it? I was watching Anger Video Game Nerds videos, and he had a feud with a Nostalgia Critic, and I watched a couple of episodes of Nostalgia Critic and checked out the site of That Guy of the Glasses, and uh, ever since that, I became a huge fan. There JJ, you go. how did you um, discover That Guy with the Glasses? I actually knew about it for a long, long time. I just never really liked it. So, like, I, I went to a thing called Yomacon, and, like, I had Doug Walker there, and I just went. And I had Lynn Carr and Angry Joe, too. I didn't really care at the time. But about, like, I don't know, maybe a year or so later, like, every now and then I watch Nostalgia Critic. Then I went to, like, Channel Awesome, and I just started watching, like, the other con contributors, like, back up in February and March. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, these guys are pretty funny. Like, they actually do some legit crap. Because I personally thought, like, stuff like the big brawl and kick-ass, I didn't really like all that. Like, my, my sister made so much fun of those guys when she seen them. She, she said they looked like a bunch of 30-year-old nerds that would, like, go outside and LARP with each other that they met over the Internet and whatnot. Not so like I really didn't like take like Channel Awesome all that seriously until I just said, oh, well, maybe I should start making reviews. And yeah, I started like in April. So I kind of caught on to it. Like I didn't really like it at first. And I was like, eh, eh fuck it. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about you, Susie? Well, I actually came across it a year ago in about February. Now, it was all through the movie 2012, unfortunately, because I didn't know about reviewing things on the internet at that point. And it was just through basically watching this movie and having a huge rant after it with my, my parents. And then I went to have a look and see if anybody else felt the same way that I did on YouTube. I thought, I'll see if anybody else actually talks about it on there. And I found the guy that I actually talked about last week, Confused Matthew. And he did a review of 2012. And I listened to it and I thought, well, he doesn't really make any different points than I do. It was a really, it was a good review, but I thought I'd really like to do my take on it. So I had to look about for some, uh, websites as I loved Confused Math with you but I thought there must be other websites that actually do reviews like that so I started looking on YouTube at other reviews that Confused Matthew did and there was one that he did that Nostalgia Critic did I can't remember what it was but I had a look at it and I was in absolute stitches of laughter I think it was maybe the Cloverfield one I, it was a Cloverfield yeah. review that, that I saw. That's what inspired him to do the bum reviews, actually. I, it was the Cloverfield review that I saw, because Confused Matthew had done my review of that movie as well. So I thought, okay, I like that review. So I thought, I'll watch a little more and a little more and a little more. And then I just got really <laughs> obsessed with watching it. It was so good. So I started watching the other things, and then I went on, found the website, and I started watching other people. And then Kick Asia came on, and I was just absolutely hooked. So then I discovered Brad Jones from that, and Spoonie and Linkara and, and everybody because I, I didn't really watch them before it was just mainly Doug and then joined the forums not really doing anything not really making notice of myself and then I finally got to do my 2012 review and then the rest is history good to know very interesting <laughs> story thank you for that we got individual questions who wants to get their question answered first me JJ is his first question is do you like anime yes I actually do I'm more of a fan of the retro anime I don't watch anything new because it all seems kind of generic now but yeah I like some of the classics and whatnot shonen anime the best probably did it ask like what is my like favorite anime uh, or something I was just gonna say if yes which ones are your favorite Ranma one half actually and Slayers between those two like I don't really have a definite one but Rama one half like inspired me to write because I love the style of Rama one half if you guys ever heard of Scott Pilgrim Rama one half is like the precursor of that it's about him and he changes into a girl whenever he gets splashed with water and he got like a whole bunch of fiancés plus he knows martial arts it's just like a good blend of like all things that are like good in like anime and it's just like it's
it's like it's put in just great perspective because like when they had the anime come over here in America, they had an amazing dub team that can do everything from sing to uh, like actually make their characters feel real. And Slayers is my favorite anime because well, it has like magic and it's about an actual girl, yet it can still show that like girls can like still be protagonists and they could still be heroic and whatnot so it's like a really good anime and a really good novel because like i want to be a novelist someday and i read like all the slayers novels and it's just it's like good for like for rpg fans and stuff so any other questions yeah two more we got for you what's the worst movie you've seen just cooler than ice cool as ice <laughs> oh. yeah like i <laughs> I actually seen that movie before he reviewed it, and it got I me mean, like really excited. And I like I just that movie was so stupid; it made no sense. <laughs> I'm gonna review that movie actually like someday because like it, it it has black overtones. So that movie is stupid as fuck. The director was actually a director of music videos, so I don't even know why the hell he thought I could direct a movie that ruined Vanilla Ice's career. So yep, that's it for questions for you, JJ. Susie, are you want to answer some questions? Yeah, go on then. Actually, there's one you like Denny so much, and you said that you Yummy. try and you try to stop at one each time you come to the stage. What is your favorite meal from Denny's? My all-time favorite. I love having this every time I'm there. Is I just love the all-day breakfast. It's just so good. The last time I actually was in a Denny's was in Las Vegas a couple of years ago, and I was eating an all-day breakfast at 11 o'clock at night. I thought that was just really cool. Just sitting there at 11 o'clock at night eating toast and bacon and sausage and hash browns. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, oh, it's to die for. It was just so good because I had an awesome day out that day and we just said, what do we want to do now? We could go back to the hotel, could go get a McDonald's, but fuck it, let's go to Denny's. So that was awesome. Uh, okay, then we got three questions. First question is, who are your favorite villains? Oh, oh God, there's, there's quite a few that I can think of. off the top of my head. Disney-wise, I love Scar from The Lion King. He just plays that character so Shakespearean and I just find that really cool to be in a Disney movie. Who else do I like? Sid from Toy Story is so freaking <laughs> twisted. But I know little boys like that, which is the funny thing about it. And you, you do forget, he is a little boy, but at the same time, he's so freaking twisted. And I just love the fact that through the toy's eyes, he's an evil bastard. <laughs> and it's oh, so good. My ultimate one, though, was the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> She's just freaking insane. <laughs> For no reason at all, just give me the slip. Dorothy is. <laughs> She's just the typical woman always going after the latest fashion accessory. It just has to be a pair of red ruby slippers. <laughs> That's my favorite villains. Next one is any summer movies you're anticipating to see? Well, everybody will probably know this one by now. It's the second part of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, because I don't shut up about it. But it's absolutely true. I, I, I am so excited about seeing this movie. You have no idea, because I love of the first part of it because the, the seventh book is my absolute favorite and from the trailer it looks <sighs> i really hope that they stay true to the but i really really do and i'm just so ex i know what happens but i'm just so excited to see what ha how they portray it on screen i'm just so freaking excited about harry potter seven part two of course i said that pirates of the caribbean i'm gonna see i'm not really anticipating it but i will see it because i do blockbuster reviews and one other one i am excited about which i didn't really think i would be is cars too. Basically for the fact that they're doing a, a kind of espionage yeah. plot in it with Mater. He's not really a character I thought I'd like, because it's Larry the Cable Guy that voices mm -hmm. him, but he's kind of grown on me for the fact he's pure redneck, but he's just so funny yeah. with it. And the, the fact that they've got British stars in there and part of the cars that they've fashioned after the royal family, because they, they, they put pictures of it in the, the British papers over here. Mm -hmm. as, as, so it, looks, it looks really cute. I'm looking forward to seeing Cars too. And Michael uh, Kane. I'm Michael Kane, isn't it? Yay! <laughs> I love Michael Kane. That's it for your questions. Well, let me ask your questions for you, Mike. Oh yeah, this this was about the the rides that they asked <laughs> us to make from last week. Your one was very trippy. The ride that you described last time sounded more like an action movie. Don't you think that would work better as a movie? <laughs> Yeah, I th when I was thinking about that, I thought it was like an action movie kind of a inspired ride. But yeah, it would be much better as a movie. They'd have to go to outer space, come back down, and then 
get some rare stone, like Indiana Jones like, and then go back on the roller coaster five times. I don't know. It'll, it'll be a good movie. I still think the title should be What the Fuck Did I Just Go On? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. What the, what the fuck just happened? JJ, you still with us? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, was, I was actually like landing back. I'm all like, Jesus. Jesus Christ, how many questions do you guys got? <laughs> Ask me more questions next time. Send JJ more yeah. questions for the next episode. And nobody, because yeah. nobody likes Mike. <laughs> Apparently. We all throw onions at him. Yes, so the first one, what are your all-time favorite movies? I'm a huge movie buff. I am I collect DVDs, and the more recent ones that I've bought is like Tron Legacy. I thought that was a really good movie. It's one of my favorites. Classics would be like Back to the Future trilogy, a bit of a Hills Cop trilogy. The new Piranha 3D was a, is a personal favorite of mine. Could I characterize Kick as a favorite? Because that yes. was an awesome movie. That's pretty much the majority I like. So the next question is, which nostalgic shows hold up well for you and which ones don't? Oh, God. I could probably say Tailspin had a good run. Yay. I love Tailspin. Oh, I actually, yeah, it's Tailspin. Tailspin. Oh, yeah. I love that show. <laughs> I, Miami Vice is a current favorite that actually holds up to this day. If you hear me rant about this, I would say Street Talk. And nobody has never heard of it, but it's still a show that still holds up today. But apparently it got cancelled. Stupid motherfuckers on NBC. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't expect you to say something like that. Stupid motherfuckers on NBC. <laughs> I'm just sitting here falling asleep. Stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike, swear more and we get JJ back. <laughs> yeah, Night Rider is another nostalgia show that holds it up for me. There's a lot of 80s, like A-Team. Airwolf was good. Animated would be like, uh, Animaniacs were good for at its time. Uh, Pinky and the and Brain. Then, right, right, what are we going to do tonight? Try to take over the world. Pinky. Of course! The shows that don't hold up well, oh god. I pretty much like anything that's on TV. Oh, what, there must be something what, you hate. It's sort of nostalgic in a way, but NBC recently uh, did like a remake of Knight Rider, like a t- continuation of it. It didn't hold up that well for me because I like the classic more than the the remade version of it. So yeah, and, right, uh, that's not nostalgic. That's recently. I, what the fuck is nostalgic that I don't like? That's the, oh, there's another favorite that holds up to this day is Saved by the Bell. Yay! It's all right because it's Saved by the Bell. Shows that don't hold up, I have no fucking clue. We'll give you a week to decide, and then you can come back <laughs> next week with that answer. Sure, yeah, why not? I'll think of something. You heard it first, folks. Scooter Mike has homework. I got homework. (laughs) The last question I got for you, Mike. How did you get Doug Walker to agree to an interview? Now, this is the answer you probably all want to hear. We kidnapped him, that's why. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, you better give me a goddamn interview or else you're going to die. I'm like two hours away from Chicago, and like Mike is like three hours from Chicago, and we just drove down there, and we just kind of jumped him. The way I got him is we originally wanted to get Brad Jones as our first interview, and we had some difficulties at the beginning because the internet was crappy, the recorders were not working, and so I had to think of something of who should we interview, and... In November of last year, I went to a con by me called DaishoCon, and Doug and Lynn Cara were there, and I met him, and we chatted for a bit. So after DaishoCon happened, I emailed him, just said, Hey, Doug, remember me from DaishoCon? Would you like to have an interview with me? He said, Sure, uh, I'm kind of busy at some things. Please email me in a couple of weeks or so. So he was doing his stuff, and I emailed him later, and he's like, What day would you like to do this interview, blah, blah. And, oh, let's just do it on this day. And it's just that simple. It's that simple. You just yeah. email and sometimes he responds, sometimes he doesn't. And we got to figure it out, and we did an interview in December. Susie and I were just nervous as hell because we didn't, it was our first interview, and... It was just us, and I was sitting there crapping myself, just like, oh my god! But yeah, we conducted that interview with him, and he said he had a fun time. But yeah, that's the story of Duck Walker coming on Attack of the awesome. awesome. So, that is the 10th episode of the podcast. What did you guys think of it? We should have got Chris. Closing thoughts. <laughs> yeah, he was busy. Yeah. He had to work, damn it. Fucking Wendy's. Where does he work at? Wendy's. He's <laughs> 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 
on his way. <laughs> He's one of the homicidal <laughs> drive through operators. Oh, Chris, we missed you, damn it. Any other closing thoughts? I'm hungry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> going to go get some Wendy's after this, actually. Maybe I might see this. <laughs> okay, well, that was the 10th episode of Attack of the Awesome. You have been attacked. 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 So stay tuned for episode 11 next week. And goodbye. So long, farewell, our readers saying goodnight. I hate to go and leave this pretty sight.